to show how to create a PRN file and upload it to the Reso software for analysis uh, for the ComColor X1 series. So here's a sample document that I've got from um, uh, you guys at SourceLink. So I'm just going to simply go in and file print. Uh, nothing too magical here. What will pull up is just basically a print window. First thing I always like to check is to make sure that my page setup is done properly. Do that just by clicking over here and telling it this document happens to be legal. Uh, so I just select legal and what you'll see is a visual that will tell you, it gives you confirmation that you're on the right size. Also make sure you do not have fit checked off. Uh, it actually shrinks the document a little bit. Make sure you have actual size, particularly when you're looking at PDFs. Once you have that set up, everything looks good, you're good to go. Uh, the next thing you'll do is click on Advanced tab, and you just want to make sure that this little box is checked here. That's Print to File, uh, and that will create the PRN file. So once that's checked, uh, you could simply go ahead and hit Print, uh, and you'll create a PRN file. But what I always like to do is to make sure that I've got my right print driver selected, because uh, sometimes your default may not be the same. I've got the 7150 selected. So if you notice when I changed print drivers, it actually changed my default settings. So I got to go back in here and make sure that it stays on legal. Again, you'll see the default uh, or the little preview screen over here. You'll be able to see it. Uh, but once you've got your 7150 selected, and I could have done this from the beginning, but I got ahead of myself there. Uh, just make sure your print to file stays on and then you want to go into your properties and this is where you got to make sure because what make sure you got it set up the way you want it because the PRN file is actually created based on these settings that are in the driver so if you want your color mode set to full color black cyan magenta or auto make sure that's set if you want it on duplex make sure you do your duplex but tell it which edge you're duplexing on Make sure your paper size is the same. You've got your original size is 8.5 by 14. You've got your paper size to print on is going to be same as original. Uh, your input tray won't have that much of an impact on it. Your paper type will. Remember when you guys played around with the, the 7050, you select the different paper types, and that essentially changes uh, the amount of drops that are put down. So you can impact quality a little bit there. Uh, from what I understand, you guys are running everything on plain, so just leave it plain there. Uh, but also go in and check each tab. Make sure that there's nothing set that you don't want set or things that are set you do want them to be a part of the analysis. For instance, like your image tab, if you want it to be left on photo-based or line-based, make sure that's checked. If you want line smoothing off, low, or high, uh, just really depends on how you want that set and what test you guys have done as to what works for you. Uh, if you get into a little more advanced, you can touch into your gamma control where you can actually get in and start changing your lightness, chroma, contrast, red, green, blue mix. Uh, again, you guys would determine which one's the right one for you guys. You can go in and change your screening if you just want air diffusion, diffusion with no screens on. You can go that way or a 70 or 100 lines per inch screen. You can also get into your image quality. Everything you guys are running is at the standard image quality, but if you have something you want to run higher, you can do that. You can also get into the details and change a little bit here, whether it be standard, draft, or data compression. Again, my point of all this is to show you that you need to make sure that whatever settings you have in the print driver is what you're going to use for production because your analysis file will be done using these settings. So then you can also change your print density if you guys have made any changes with there. I believe everything is just a standard there. Uh, finishing doesn't so much have an impact on the, the quality, so not a big deal there with your finishing tab. Then when you get into your advanced mode, none of these really have anything uh, to do with the analysis unless you're going to add things like a watermark or a page stamp or something along that line. Anything you add to the document that will be printed uh, will impact the amount of coverage that you have there. So once you've got all your tabs set, you just hit OK. And from there, when I touch print, what's going to actually happen is instead of printing, it comes up and says, OK, here's, here's your PRN file. Uh, where do you want to save it? 
and I'm going to put it in a folder that I've got for you guys. Uh, let's see, source link. Let me come on down. Here we go. Um, and then I've got analysis files, and I'll just stick it in there, and I'll call this test. Uh, you can name it whatever you want there. Uh, and then I hit save. And what it's doing is taking this PDF, and it's going to actually create a PRN file from there. Um, so once that PRN file is is created, uh, you'll see the uh, file extensions here. I'll just open up my analysis file and show you that all of these are created or PRN files. If for any case you have one that comes up as a just a file uh, and it does not have the PRN file extension, this one is still in process as you it still has it processed over. So. Um, but at any time, what you can do is actually double click on it here and simply click in the name, type PRN. And once that is actually done, then it will convert it over to a PRN file. Uh, I've seen some instances where some versions of Adobe Acrobat uh, will cause you to do that extra step, but pretty easy fix there. You just type in .PRN. You'll know that your, your file has been created when it pops up, you just saw it pop up right there. Uh, and in this case, uh, it was just a file created. It was not a PRN. So I would go back through that process again and just type in .PRN, and it would create it from there. Uh, it'll probably tell me because we have two files named the same. So let me delete this one, and we'll just go in here and name this one test.PRN. And there you go. Now what you'll see is that is actually changed over to PRN. Uh, if you get one that shows up where it's zero kilobytes or just ridiculously small, uh, chances are it did not create the PRN file correctly. But once you've got your PRN file, then it would just simply be go to the link uh, that I sent you with the username and password to get into the inkjet cost analysis cost per page calculator. Um, real simple from here. Uh, you just have to make sure that you select the right printer. Uh, you'll notice that the Com Color X1 series, they've got them all lumped together here. And then you just choose your file. Uh, once your file is chosen, it'll take it a minute to upload it because uh, it's actually uploading it to a site, believe it or not, in Japan uh, is where this actually goes. And they're not storing the data. They're not doing anything with it. Uh, but that's just where the server resides that actually anal analyzes the files. So you've got your, your test file, it'll be uploaded. Uh, you put in your dollar amount, whether you want it to be in currency in dollars, pounds, euros, because uh, keep in mind they are doing this around the world. You'll put in your 379 bucks, which is what you guys are paying for ink. Um, if any of that ever changes, you just simply type over those numbers there. And then you just come in and view your estimated, um, your estimated cost per page. Depending on the size of the file, uh, depending on the number of pages, depending on, you know, all the factors you set in there, it could take a few minutes, but you'll notice down here in the bottom corner, oh, you'll notice down here in the bottom corner where my mouse is, you'll see the percentage that it's going through. Now, keep in mind that file I uploaded was six pages. Uh, we told it to duplex, we told it to print color, uh, standard, all these other settings. So that was a six page file. Now, what will come back from from the Reso cost per copy calculator is it'll tell you the ink cost for the entire print file. Uh, so to print that entire file, you're looking at 8.79 cents uh, for your ink. Your average ink cost per page is 0.0146. Your ink coverage is 11.6%. Well, the total number of pages of six pages. Um, I know something you had talked about was print costing, uh, doing different costs for uh, the lighter color pages are the ones that are just in black versus the color. You know, you can play around with this. You can upload one one page at a time and, and see what you can come up with there. Uh, so it should be able to give you maximum flexibility. But that's basically it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a buzz. But that gives you an overview of how to create a PRN file, then upload it to the uh, Reso cost, analysis, cost analysis calculator.